What are the important clinical trials beyond the Women's Health Initiative that provide evidence that supports hormone replacement therapy? Hormone replacement therapy has been very controversial since 2002 or so. That's when the Women's Health Initiative was abruptly stopped and women started flushing their hormones down the toilet out of fear of breast cancer. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those are about hormone optimization. And I'm especially interested in hormone optimization when it comes to menopause in women with low estradiol and progesterone. I really wanna help patients and healthcare providers understand that the Women's Health Initiative isn't the last word on hormones for menopause, in spite of what you may have heard or read. Multiple randomized controlled trials, or RCTs, have investigated hormone replacement in post menopausal women since the WHI. Conclusions from these studies in many ways might contradict the published results as well as the conventional wisdom that came from the Women's Health Initiative. If we understand what these studies, including the WHI, say and don't say, we'll get a grasp on evidence-based treatments for menopause and we'll go beyond that conventional wisdom that says basically hormones are harmful to women. Well, here are a few of the most important studies that I'd love to talk about today, at least four primary studies and then a few smaller ones. First is the Danish Osteoporosis Prevention Study, or DOPS. This study looked at estradiol and a progestin that's called norethestrone in about 1,006 patients in Denmark. They looked primarily, as the name would imply, at osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Well, there was a decreased risk of death overall in women who were taking hormones. Hormones were associated with decreased heart failure or a heart attack when hormone replacement was started early in menopause. Well, there was no increased risk for breast cancer in the estrogen plus progestin group. And there was a significantly reduced breast cancer risk with estrogen alone. And this is the same thing that happened with the Women's Health Initiative. The women who took only estrogen actually had lower rates of breast cancer. Well, the title of the study suggests that it all, it's all about osteoporosis. And reports from the trial showed that hormone replacement reduced fracture risk. There was one specifically about uh, forearm fracture risk. In one report, hormone replacement was shown to sort of decouple body mass and bone mass. So there's kind of a strong association between heavier women having stronger bones and lighter women having weakened or osteoporotic bones. In the, the Danish study, this effect was sort of uncoupled so that women taking estradiol and norethestrone had strong bones regardless of their body weight while women not taking hormones tended to show weaker bones with lower body weight. In the very same study report, women taking estradiol gained less weight in menopause than women not taking hormones. And weight gain is a huge complaint in the symptoms of menopause. The second study is the Kronos Early Estrogen Prevention Study, or KEEPS. In that study, oral conjugated equine estrogens, or horse urine estrogens were given, or transdermal 17-beta estradiol, both were given with progesterone. And they also had a placebo arm where patients took either placebo pills or patches. There was no increased risk of breast cancer in the hormone replacement group. Patients on hormones showed less progression of atherosclerosis than patients that were not given hormones, and that was based on two different signs. One is a CIMT, or carotid intima media thickness. It looks at the closing off of the carotid artery in the neck, which is pretty well established as kind of a surrogate measure of heart disease risk. You can't really see the, the heart blockage coming on, but you can see the blockage coming on in the artery in the neck. The second is coronary artery calcium scores, or CAC. This trial supports the use of hormone replacement early in menopause, since early hormones may slow down cardiovascular disease. Hormone replacement improved bone health and also sexual function in this study. Women treated with hormones had improved HOMA IR scores, basically reduced insulin resistance in the KEEPS trial. The next study is the early versus late intervention trial with estradiol, also referred to as ELITE. 
and that it, women were given oral estradiol with or without uh, vaginal progesterone. This trial tested the timing hypothesis. That is that estradiol early in menopause actually prevents heart disease. And the conclusion of the trial is that the hypothesis is correct. Higher estradiol levels early in menopause led to reductions in carotid intima media thickness, the CIMT, which as we mentioned is a surrogate marker for heart disease. Patients on placebo showed faster progression of clogged arteries. The next study is the E3N EPIC cohort study. It was, uh, it was not a clinical trial as such, but it evaluated multiple oral and transdermal estrogens with or without multiple oral progestins in 54,548 French women. One of the combinations was bioidentical estradiol, sometimes called 17-beta estradiol, along with oral micronized progesterone. That combination had the lowest risk of breast cancer, lower than even no hormones at all. The study said no or little increase in risk with estrogens used alone or combined with micronized progesterone. Also, increase in risk reached significance when estrogens were combined with synthetic progestins and was significantly greater than when combined with micronized progesterone. So we can see from the results of these four studies that replacing the hormones that are lost at menopause can have a significant impact on long-term health risks. These studies show that replacing estradiol and progesterone can help reduce the risks for at least three major long-term health issues. Number one, osteoporosis. That's especially poignant in the Danish osteoporosis prevention study, proving that you could prevent osteoporosis with estradiol. Second, cardiovascular disease, as represented by CIMT and CAC, or coronary artery calcium scores, which were shown to be much better in women who were given estradiol early in menopause than women not taking hormones in both the KEEPS and the ELITE trials. Both of those trials basically showed the same thing, that early estradiol made a big difference in preventing heart disease. And then the third is breast cancer. Women given a combination of bioidentical 17-beta estradiol and bioidentical progesterone are at the lowest risk for breast cancer, as shown in the E3N EPIC cohort study, among others. There was a smaller study called Replenish. This trial used estradiol and progesterone versus placebo. It showed no increased risk of breast cancer over a shorter admittedly like a one-year period. Let's look at insulin resistance as one of the long-term health issues. In addition to these larger trials, several smaller trials showed estradiol replacement has a positive impact on insulin resistance. There's evidence that maybe medroxyprogesterone, when it's added to estradiol, can kind of reverse the positive effects and maybe reduce insulin sensitivity and make insulin resistance worse. Estradiol replacement after menopause has shown a lot of promise in preventing cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. There was a small Korean trial of estradiol and progesterone that showed patients taking hormones had reduced deterioration in mild cognitive decline when they were compared to patients who were taking placebo. Another study showed that there was reduced beta amyloid plaque deposits in patients on estradiol versus patients taking a placebo. That may seem somewhat promising at first, except the evidence isn't all that strong that reducing beta amyloid really makes that much difference in Alzheimer's development. It doesn't necessarily actually reduce the cognitive decline and, and memory issues. There was a randomized trial showing that women taking continuous estradiol preserved their brain metabolism longer than women who were taken off estradiol. Another study showed that women taking uh, estradiol hormone replacement had higher cognitive scores and higher rates of brain metabolism, which corresponds to slower cognitive decline than women who were taking conjugated equine estrogens. Those are the, the horse estrogens given in the WHI. This study also showed that women taking both estradiol and progesterone had somewhat reduced brain metabolism when it was compared to estradiol alone. So estradiol showed the best, uh, conjugated equine showed the, the worst, and estradiol plus progesterone was kind of in the middle somewhere. If you're a hormone optimization practitioner, I've put together a bibliography of menopause hormone references that might be helpful in your practice. 
either for you to refer to yourself or to give out to patients. I've got a public PubMed bibliography that I can share with you, as well as a printable PDF of these same references. If you're a patient and you're looking for an experienced hormone provider that can help you with your menopause situation, help to optimize your estradiol and your progesterone, hit me up in the link that says, find a doctor. I'll do my best to find a qualified hormone provider somewhere near you. I have a couple of hundred on my database from all over the US and even Canada and some even in the UK. I don't, can't guarantee that I'll find you somebody, but I'll give it my best shot. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons and get notified anytime I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.